Hey guys, it's Sarah here from Edgecom Art and welcome to my very messy art studio. Today I'm going to be showing you how I painted this little wee street scene. It's a view that I see very often on the way to school. Um, and it is a small cul-de-sac in Ipswich, Australia. I put the colours down on the canvas in two separate um, time slots there. The first set you can see there are the blues and the browns and the yellow, um, the yellow ochre that is, that I used to put in the sky and the concrete and a little bit of the block in. And then I switched to some brighter, more saturated colours, uh, the cadmiums, um, those sorts of colours to put in the trees and the other brighter elements of the painting. As I said, it's a slightly new um, a new palette for me and there are a couple of changes that I have made since. Alrighty, so we're going to be popping in the sky and blocking in the road here. Um, I'm not going to talk all the way through the video, just um, give you some pointers along the way. For the sky today, we're using ultramarine as our, um, as our base with a very smicky hint of the sienna and a tiny little bit of cerulean in the bottom. Um, the sienna just helps because it's a mild orange just to desaturate the blue just a little bit and the cerulean also adds to cool down the sky ever so slightly. It's a really basic sky because the rest of the, the painting is quite busy and I didn't really think I had the room in there to put in any clouds. So it's basically just a very, very simple blend. If you wanted to put a little bit of white clouds in or something in there, you could. But um, personally, I think it was just a little bit too busy for that. Um, and then I mixed up the road colour, actually just using the base of the sky there because road, our tarmac here has got quite a, you know, like a, a dark sort of bluey base in it as well. And I thought, hey, well, look, um, that will help with the, you know, the shadows in that cool section of the road there. And, you know, it's not wasting as much paint. So I popped that in there as well. Um, and then I went through with a, uh, a grey, actually with a hint of the ochre in it as well, um, and just blocked in some stuff. No, it doesn't look pretty. We're just putting colour down on the canvas at the moment, basically just blocking in and figuring out exactly where we are going to put a lot of the, um, a lot of the shapes. As you can see there, that's sort of how it ended up. Um, remembering, of course, that this is a, you know, a relatively short painting, not a you know a really a really big one. Um, and as you can see there, we're just blocking in shapes, um, just roughly putting in where the trees are going to go. And as you can see, those colours are very not saturated; they are not very bright. Um, I just was sketching out with some thin ochre and a little bit of black. Um, just to see where they're going to go and then I added in the extra colors onto the canvas so a um, couple of yellows a phthalo green a doxazine purple um, it's my, my palette has changed ever so slightly from this <laughs> but um, uh, there's some good colors to add in and then very basically we're just putting in the back of these trees in here with some quite dark colors um, they're possibly still a little bit too saturated for what they should have been um, but they were dark and they were muted and they had some complementary colors in them um, so they're not very very bright greens they have some orange in them or they're muted down with some yellow ochre just to pop those in and then you can see there I'm just popping in a little bit of the light actually with a little bit of Naples yellow. I might have put a tiny bit of cad yellow in there and some white as well. Um, it's still a little bit in the background and I just wanted to keep it a little bit dull just to start off with. You can always brighten it up um, a little bit later. Um, and then just starting to have a little bit of a think about the greens and what I was going to do. So this is quite a quite a dark a dark green in there. Um, you don't want to start off anything um, anything too you know like too bright or anything. So there's a little bit of black. There's some cad yellow um, may, uh, and uh, yellow ochre in there as well. Um, it is a little bit in the shadow as well, so it was a little bit tricky as to which which colours you know you might want to pop um, want to pop in there. It's not dreadfully dreadfully bright, so there are some darker colours in there. And I know I go back a little bit later on and put some um, dioxazine purple and sort of blacky browns and maybe a little bit of um, the cooler red and things underneath um, the tree as well. But I was but just basically blocking in shapes, and that's just sort of roughly what I was roughly what I was doing. Now these trees are not actually very far away and they are still quite bright um, at various times of the year down in the back there. Um, 
technically the further back in the painting you go the more muted uh, the colors ought to be um, and perhaps I could have increased the drama of the painting had I put some um, more muted uh, like tones in the back of there but um, as I said it was it was a quick painting it, it was what it was so um, very basically as you can see here I'm just muddling in popping in popping in greens um, Obviously in the lighter areas of the painting there is um, a little bit more white and a little bit more yellow but just a, a real big hint here if you're trying to make your yellows brighter uh, don't add white. Oh, well, you can add a little bit of white but it will desaturate and take kind of, oh sorry, if you're trying to make your greens brighter, sorry I don't know if I said that, um, you don't want to add like just white to them, you actually want to add yellow, like white will desaturate which is good um, you know like to dull the green down a little bit but if you actually want to make your green brighter it's yellow you need as a general rule. Um, it's just something that you know you do quite often is to you know add white to something to make it lighter and it does not always work um, yeah anyway so there I'm just like popping in a few things just sort of you know playing around um, obviously the photos I had you could probably see in there were taken at very different times of day and the light down there changes dramatically and I was just trying to come up with the um, you know with the setting that I wanted um, I wanted best in there and that was obviously the light behind um, so the midsection in there is actually more well lit than the, the front parts um, of the painting and then I'm just popping in that left hand tree there um, as you can see there that is not a bright green uh, that is made I'm pretty sure with a black and a little bit of the yellow ochre it gives quite a nice olive green um, in there for the background um, um, you can always add some brighter colors over the top and that serves quite well as like your base darker colors and things um, and there you can just see just with a little bit of white and sort of um, brownie sienna little bit red I'm just sort of trying to pop in some um, you know like tree trunks and things and just in there into the back back of there and you can also see there's a tiny little bit of some yellows coming in there because it is a lot of light over that side mm -hmm. but I'm not putting in great big massive um, amounts of that because that is um, a little bit further in the background and then down that side there those um, the olive green on that sort of left hand side of those back sets of trees there is a little bit um, duller as well and then I was just playing around getting in some quite dark quite sort of browny colors I added in some brown and things in there and that very front tree um, and the tree behind it that I'm working on there is a little bit brighter and I am putting in a little bit of the like brown colors and stuff in the in there so I can put some brighter colors over it a little bit later. Um, I'm a bit of a messy painter um, in the sense that I kind of throw things on the floor a little bit and um, come back and start on a different section so I don't like start and finish one tree or just start and finish this guy. I kind of like work on it a little bit and throw it on the floor and pick it back up again and go oh, okay I can finish this so um, yeah and I know I said I wasn't going to talk all the way through but yeah oops. Um, and now I'm just sort of starting to think about adding a little bit of light and um, I know I go over it several times because I'm not quite happy with what I was um, what I was doing there but you can um, with that the ultramarine um, and the yellow and ultramarine is quite a um, it's quite a it doesn't make the very very brightest of greens so I did add a tiny little bit of tiny little bit of the phthalo green into that as well just to um, really give that uh, the green a little bit of um, punch I guess but be very careful if you're using phthalo green it is a horrible color straight out of the tube and I really don't like it very much at all and I use it with extreme um, extreme caution shall we say I mean, it is a great color, but you know, yeah. Um, another color I really like on there is actually the Naples yellow. Um, it's quite pretty. Um, it doesn't have a very high tinting strength. So if you are going to be mixing it with a blue to make a, um, a green, it's not gonna make a very bright green. Um, and you're going to need a very, very tiny amount of your other color to go in with it as well. So um, yeah, sometimes I would add it more into say, like white and, like a cad yellow and then mix in some Naples instead of the white maybe just to mute it all down a little bit 
Um, yeah. And just a little hint while I'm talking about that, you cannot mix like a cad yellow light using cad yellow light and white desaturated. It's, it's not the right way to go about it. Um, you know, you can't add white to cad yellow deep to make it cad yellow light. It's just, they're different shades, they're different colors. The cad yellow, um, you know, light has a, a more green sort of tint to it versus the cad yellow deep, which is more of a, um, and you know, like an orangey shade of the yellow. And then you can just see, just slowly starting to bring it through. I'm figuring out exactly where I want everything, um, want everything to go. I had a couple of compositional issues in here with this foreground because when I put in, when I was going to pop in the fence line, I found that some of the rails and things, it was just cutting across where the, the rail lines were and you couldn't really tell, they were kind of cutting across the same place. So I needed to move a little bit of the trees, well not the trees, the grass that I'm working on down in there a little bit. Um, just moving things around a little bit to get it out of the way of um, uh, the rails because it looks a bit weird if you have the you know that um, the the rail line there and then the fence line kind of in the same spot you can't really see that they're very different so I needed to move that around a little bit um, and in the background there there is obviously a lot of light but it's also quite um, you know it's a more distant color so I did add a little bit more of this sienna sort of yellow yellow ochre or um, Naples yellow even in it um, versus that front grass there which is still in, sort of in light but it is a lot closer to the viewer as well so there's more of the cad yellow um, in the front of um, that painting there And mostly this is all just, you know, like just playing around, figuring out exactly where I wanted things, um, you know, changing things around, popping in a little bit of light back again and then dulling it back out again, just figuring out exactly, um, you know, in my head where the composition I kind of wanted it to go. I didn't have like a really specific view in my head. I knew kind of what I wanted to go, but not quite exactly how I wanted it to get there. And I wanted to brighten up that front again, so I put in a little bit more, um, a little bit more light and then just putting in just some little little hints of lights on those trees up in there with a um, a, a really quite a bright sort of a green color again watch out don't just add white to whatever color you're working with um, you can see there in the little puddles that I'm creating that to brighten a green uh, you really need to add yellow to it um, you can add a little bit of white it will desaturate it but you then you need to add the um, the yellow back in or a teensy tiny little bit of phthalo depending on um, what kind of a green um, you're going for and those greens there those really brighter greens there I've made with the ultramarine and the um, and the yellow cad yellow medium um, if you wanted some even brighter greens you could add in a different blue because ultramarine is quite a um, can be quite you know creates some quite muted um, greens so you could add in maybe like a cerulean or a cobalt teal or something like that as well um, to to do that with I don't think I use the cerulean very much in this painting actually Something I have been doing recently actually is a whole heap of little color studies just to do with the various yellows and the various blues. It's actually really quite interesting, you know, like what colors you can make with each. Um, you know, one of the reasons why so many painters or, you know, like so many, um, uh, I guess it's, I get really annoyed when I see a lot of um, people saying, oh, you add blue and you add yellow and you, you know, you add purple. I was like, oh, what, what, what's it? you know, they all have, um, you know different biases towards whatever side and you know if you're just going to add any yellow to a blue it might not actually give the color you're expecting it to like if the screen is telling you to add blue and yellow together to get this particular color and it doesn't make that color and you think it's just you and actually no really it is the fact that you're adding the wrong um you know the cool and the warm of the yellow and the the blue together and it just won't give you the right color that you want um you know so i mean if you were to add the ultramarine and the naples yellow together you are not going to get a a, you know, a really really bright a bright green to get a really bright green you need to add a um nice cad yellow or even some of your um your uh like uh your other bright yellows a real, I can't even pronounce a really mild or whatever it might happen to be and your blues um, you know depending on what your, um, your your paints are 
rather than adding in say like an ochre or a Naples yellow which will give you some more muted colors. Anyway, so I got um, annoyed with the background at that point and decided just to pop in a little bit of light there on the road. Now the base of the road there, as you know, we put in the um, the blue with the, the, the gray. So concrete really is not just black and white, Do, you know, like it, it's very un, uncommon that particularly here in Australia, we either have very dark sort of bluey purpley kind of tones in our concrete or we have our concrete that is really um, it's got a lot of sandy stony kind of colors in it um, it can be quite red as well so um, just have a little bit of think about what other colors ought to be going into your concrete and then just popping in the line I think that must be the Naples yellow with a little bit of cadmium in it um, to be fair <laughs> we have a mum that continually decides that she likes to park across that yellow line it drives us all absolutely bonkers um, and then um, just going back and you know like just playing around with things and popping them in a little bit more adding in a little bit of layers here a little bit more shadow there I think that's when I add in the dark scene purple okay that's the screen there but um in those shadows um the dark scene because it's got a it's a red and blue so it's really quite uh, and and it's transparent the dark scene as well um it makes some really quite nice um quite nice shadows it's a bit like just adding um you know thalo and and a, a red into the painting so um, it's just a, a color to consider it's a cool color as well so you know if you're adding in shallow shallows shadows um, adding in a purple but you can mix the same thing with red but you know it's just something that is a little bit easier to pop in there and then I'm just adding in a little bit of extra lights and things down in the front there I do remember at the time this painting got thrown on the floor a few times because I didn't like it. And um, I was struggling a little bit because the grass in the front there, you know, versus the painting and versus what I can see in real life, you know, it does have a lot of sort of you know goldeny colors in it and every time I painted it it was coming out too white and too desaturated and I'm just ah, not quite sure and I also at this point knew that I had some issues with the railing going in over it and I just wanted to make sure that um, yeah I had it in right I remember these uh, now that I look at the video playing back you know those little, little bushes in the front there really actually annoyed me I can't I can't quite remember here let me find the picture Yeah, that's right, because um, the picture itself, a lot of the area, like a um, couple of the photos I took had some quite red tints on them as well. And um, yeah. And also just with the composition, I think I tilted the, 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 the rail lines just ever so slightly out of where they were just for the composition. And it was just making things a little bit awkward getting it in exactly the way I wanted it to. And then just popping in the power line. So that's then down with some of the clear painting medium and the um, black. Um, I find it just a little bit easier than just using the water because it doesn't sort of unbind the paint as much um, and that's just with a liner brush and just really carefully sometimes it helps to like hold the yeah tilt the painting around so you're not working in such a really odd angle and that brush it's it needs a little bit of a bit of TLC it's it's a bit bent but that's okay um, one thing with the power lines when you're popping them in if you're put them in when your background is very dry um, then you won't get any bleeding but also if you use a very 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 dry brush um, after the fact like if you make it whoopsie um, a very um, dry brush just sort of like knock it knock it back and in you can do that you can also use an ever so slightly wet brush as well not runny just um, dip it in the clean water and then really blot it off on some paper and just slide it along the edge of that power line and it should knock off I think that's what I'm doing there actually yeah, you can see that with the brush um, it will just help tidy up the um, those those straight lines again make sure your sky is very dry when you're doing that um, worst case scenario of course you can just paint over that a little bit with um, a little bit of sky as well um, you can see and now I'm just popping in that little fence that's in there I took a little bit of artistic light license with that it's not quite that size um, but as you can see like that top rail was quite close to the um, 
the power line I'm not the power line to the railway lines and I just needed to make sure that was in right so basically that's just a case of putting in one line with black and then a dribbly line with some yellow and then I'm just going back in and popping in a little bit of light behind there where I think I smudged it a little bit as well um, I'm not putting it in really super clearly um, it is covered by a little bit of the the bushes and the trees and things in there um, and that's that's okay it's quite rusty and sort of you know dull back in the background and then I'm just going back through and um, popping in a little bit of extra a little bit of extra lights um, cad yellow naples yellow white um, remembering yeah I was like ah too bright too bright um, remembering of course that that is it's in the light but it's not absolutely absolutely in the light in some of those spots in there anyway and that is the painting <laughs> anyway see you later guys